VS Code gets a long-awaited update, a high school student reverse-engineered iMessage, an amazing DIY split-flap display, and a pick of the week that we've been waiting for for over 10 years. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. And you guys, last episode, I made the massive, massive mistake of wearing a UGA hoodie, and I think I cursed the dogs. So we're never doing that again. Uh, instead, I am wearing one of GitHub's new Copilot t-shirts. It's cute, right? It even says GitHub is my Copilot on the back, and you can get your own at thegithubshop.com. And that actually segues into my first bit of news, which is to promo a blog post from our shop team about some of the holiday gifts you can find at thegithubshop.com. I'm partial to the GitHub skateboard deck myself. Uh, anyway, I've got a link to the show notes and description for um, the blog post and the shop. Um, and, you know, some great holiday gift ideas for the GitHub fan in your life. Speaking of holiday gifts, my gift to myself this year was a Steam Deck OLED. I've had a blast with my OG Steam Deck for the last 18 months or so, and so I had to get the upgraded version. And this way, my husband can inherit my old 512 gigabyte model. So happy holidays to us both. But that got me thinking, there are a ton of great Steam Deck related projects, alternate operating systems, launchers, utilities, and other hacks all over GitHub. So I've done my part to collect the best ones in a GitHub collection that I've got linked in the show notes and description down below at gh.io slash steam dash deck. If you've got suggestions for stuff that I should add, let me know in the comments or on social media and I will do that. Moving on, VS Code got a huge update, it's final for 2023, that brings one of the most heavily requested features to VS Code, floating editor support. So the idea is that you can now move editors out of the main window and into their own window, but it doesn't have all the other Chrome. Um, this is really great for people who have multiple monitors or who just want to be able to you know, move things around. This feature has been in beta for a little bit, and there is a GitHub issue that I've got linked um, down below if you've got any problems. But so far, I have to say, I wrote this very script in a floating window, and I'm a huge fan. There are a ton of other uh, uh, new features in the latest version of VS Code as well, but I want to highlight one, which is um, there's a new extension auto update feature, which lets you control what extensions you would like to auto update and which ones you might want to leave alone for whatever reason. And uh, there's also some other stuff, some bug fixes, and I've got the VS Code blog and the GitHub repo linked down below. In some I Love the Teens news, a high school student who goes by JJ Tech managed to reverse engineer Apple's iMessage protocol in a way that is incredibly brilliant. So JJ Tech actually did this back in August and released a Python project called PyPush on GitHub to boot, but I certainly didn't notice it until the team at Beeper announced the launch of their new Android app, Beeper Mini, that's built in part using PyPush. And the Beeper team, who I should note, do a lot of really great stuff with open source, bought the project from JJ Tech and they've licensed it under the SSPL, but the proof of concept is still available on GitHub. And this is really incredible work, and not just because JJ Tech is a high schooler. I've used a lot of non-official implementations of iMessage over the years, and this is the first one that I've seen that actually works well and doesn't require using a dormant Mac as a server. Instead, everything is actually going through Apple. Look, I'm sure that this technically violates some terms of service somewhere, but like, frankly, I really don't care. I think this is metal as hell that it exists, and I love that the code is on GitHub. If you want to learn more about how this and V for Mini work, I recommend watching a video from my friend Quinn Nelson on YouTube. I've got that link below. Or checking out JJ Tech's blog and the Beeper team's blog outlining what they're doing and, and how it all works. So links for all that stuff are in the show notes and the description. Next up, Google announced Gemini, which it is dubbing its largest and most capable AI model ever. And it will eventually be available in three different weights with its largest weight, Ultra, beating GPT 4V in some tasks, according to Soda Benchmarks. And the Ultra model won't be available until sometime next year, but the other weights will be available starting December 13th. And as I've said, when we've talked about uh, past AI developments from companies not GitHub or our parent company, you might think that it's weird for me to talk about a competitor's AI model and, you know, yeah, kinda. Um, but it's still important, and so I wanna send my congrats to Google and the DeepMind team on this. So I've got links to their announcement in the show notes in the description. 
And now it is time for our project spotlight, where I highlight a particularly cool project on github.com. And I found this one thanks to Martin Woodward, and it is a relatively mature project, but man, is it cool. So Scott Bez has been maintaining a DIY guide to building your own split flap display. You know, like those old school displays that you might see at a train station or an airport. Yeah, those. So we actually had a split flap display at GitHub Universe, and you can see our playlist for GitHub Universe just above me or in the show notes. But unfortunately, we did not use Scott's amazing instructions or, or DIY hardware and software. Uh, this is an incredibly, incredibly comprehensive project for hardware and software. And I'm so impressed with all the work that Scott has done to do this. I'm going to be honest, this is way past my skill to fabricate my, my, myself, but I have fantasies of getting someone else to fabricate something similar for me because it would look cool in my office. So I've got a link to Scott's GitHub repo and project landing page in the show notes and the description. Amazing work. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So fun fact about me. I don't drive, um, in real life anyway. Like, I've never liked driving, and I lived in New York City for way too long for it to matter, so I'm a passenger princess for life. However, I do love to play games where you steal cars. So obviously, Grand Theft Auto is one of my favorite series, and Grand Theft Auto 6 is a game that I cannot wait to play. The first trailer dropped this week after first being leaked online, whoops, and Rockstar says the game will be out sometime in 2025. Um, it's been more than 10 years since GTA 5 came out, and I am so ready, I'm so ready. Take me back to Vice City. Uh, the video already has 113 million views as, as I record this, so there's a good chance that you've seen it, but I, I'm psyched. Anyway, I'm very, very excited. What long-awaited video game franchise are you most excited about for a return? Let me know in the comments down below, or let me know your thoughts on anything else we discussed. That's going to do it for me. If you liked this episode, go ahead and give us a like. It helps the algorithm out. And go ahead and subscribe to GitHub for all your nerd needs. See you next time.